You're listening to Crazy Shit in Real Estate. You'll be amazed at all these wild but true situations that others have found themselves in. Because on this show, you'll hear uncensored, unbelievable stories from the world of real estate. I'm Lee Brown. Let's dive right in. Before you get the rest of the story, I'd love to share a quick message from today's sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Follow Up Boss, one of the leading CRMs, client relationship managers for residential real real estate, tons of top producing agents, and some of the fastest growing teams out there are using follow-up balls to increase lead conversion, eliminate busy work that you're not doing anyway, and frankly, deliver a higher class experience in real estate to everybody who chooses you as their realtor of choice. So if you're going to keep listening to this, which I know you will, there's more information and a personal review of follow-up balls. For more information, go to followupboss.com slash crazy. Hello, friends. I'm Lee Brown. This is Crazy Shit in Real Estate. And today we've got a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of investing and a little bit of Idaho. And basically, we have Heather Dreaves. So I hope that you've got your pen and pencil ready and even your reading glasses. Enjoy this episode. I'll see you on the other side. So, exactly. welcome to the podcast. And Thank I'm very glad to be here, Heather. I know I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. So is it Drevis or Dreaves? Because I had two different versions in my head. It's Dreaves. Like the butler Jeeves, but I had Drevis because I thought it sounded kind of European and fancy. <laughs> well, you could call me whatever. I mean, no, it is. Well, obviously it's not my maiden name. It's my husband's name. And he is very German. His dad was very, very German. So there you go. So there is a European connection. So I'm not absolutely out of left field. I'm just yeah. like wandering into center field somehow. Yes. <laughs> so welcome to the show. Tell my audience a little bit about you, what you do, where you're located. What's the Heather background story? So I'm located in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, which most people have never, have you been here? Yes. And I love it so much. Oh, well, we love it too. We try to tell people it's a terrible place, but oh, I'm secret- sorry. it was terrible. There were <laughs> college students everywhere. And actually when I went for a run around the lake, I had to stop a lot because there were people all over the place. So it was terrible. <laughs> we tell them there's lots of bears and mosquitoes, but nobody believes us. So Coeur d'Alene, Idaho is right next to Spokane, Washington. I'm originally from Spokane, but our corporate office, actually the view behind me is the view from our office window. So we're super spoiled. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Just kidding, Concord. I love you. We're just not, <laughs> we don't look like that. <laughs> but, you know, my journey really kind of started just in the private money industry. I went to college to be a teacher and realized I really liked my children, but wasn't too excited about dealing with everybody else's kids. So was really good at sales, had a friend in the private money industry, didn't know a lot about it. This was about 20 years ago. And he said, come to work for me. I had zero idea what they did, but was fascinated. Once I got into the industry, I had my dad and mom were real estate investors, but you know, more traditional in the sense that they thought that they had to go to a bank to get financing and there's limitations with that. And so my eyes were opened, not only to the opportunity to buy real estate and obtain funding outside of your more traditional sources, but also the opportunity to help investors create wealth for themselves and saw that opportunity through the purchase of notes and also through the investing in um, real estate funds. And so just kind of opened my eyes to the alternative asset class and have never left. My husband and I decided to do some fix and flipping. I thought it would be like Chip and Joanna. It is not. It's not as glamorous. Own some rentals now and really just do the passive side of the investing at this point. So, Okay, so let me ask a couple of questions. And I am a very low risk profile person. So I've only done normal financing on all my investment properties because I don't, and I say this as a seasoned realtor and a seasoned investor, I don't understand private money slash hard money slash alternative financing. So how would you A, define this to the rest of the world and B, what do you say to somebody with a low risk, 
highly conservative, does things the old school way profile. How do you bring somebody like me into a place where I could grow without being panicked about it? Right. Well, I think first addressing the first question, really defining what private money is. And it's really just an alternative source for funding outside of a bank. And you know, as well as I do, that when you find those hot deals and you have a very motivated seller, time is of the essence. And they want to close quick before they A, change their mind or B, another investor swoops in. More often than not, our clients have to move quick. And when I say our clients, I'm talking about the people we lend money to. They're very seasoned real estate investors. We, as a lender, understand the ability and the urgency to close quick. And so we can make a very quick decision. Hey, what's the property worth? Is this borrower qualified? The biggest things that hold us up and take time are title insurance and appraisals. We actually have veered away from appraisals. We use a hybrid product. We can get evaluation in five days now. So the benefit to private money outside of a bank is we could close hypothetically in two weeks and quick. The other benefit to private money is we can close based off of an after repair value. So a lot of our clients are buying very distressed properties and banks don't typically look at the future value. They're very in tune to what the property's worth as it sits, as is, and a majority of our clients and what we teach our clients is buy the ugliest house on the block, buy the distressed property, um, buy the lien abatement from the county, and more often than not, their values are so low, you know, they have a tough time getting financing for purchase money and rehab. So I think Private money allows people to move quickly. It also allows investors to do more deals more often. So speaking of that that rehab piece, so if they find a house that is the ugliest house on the block, it's boarded up, it's covered Mm -hmm. in junk, some of our investors can find the money for the purchase, but then they don't know where they're going to get $150,000 to gut it down to the studs. And so is that something that you guys have that flexibility to give them both pieces because the traditional financing doesn't have that option. Absolutely. We actually can provide purchase money and rehab money. Obviously, we want them to come in with some skin in the game, um, but the skin in the game that we require them is much less than a bank is going to require them. So instead of tying up their capital and only being able to do one deal every six months, they could potentially do two or three with us. Obviously, we qualify them. They have to have the ability to make payments and show they have the financial wherewithal to to pull the deal off. But we focus on the asset and we also focus on the borrower, but more so, are we putting that borrower in a position to be successful? Not just what's their credit, what's their track record. We're not going to lend to somebody that's actively in foreclosure or bankruptcy, but most real estate investors have had hiccups. If they were active in 2008, More often than not, they've had some challenges. So we can see past that if they're in a better position now. And I think as a private lender, you have the ability to do what you want to do if it's a good deal and it makes sense. So um, that's the benefit to that. So what is the cost difference? And obviously numbers change depending on when somebody's watching this episode. But if somebody's going to use private money versus a traditional bank, Are they looking at a point, two points, five points difference? How big of a spread is there? Because obviously you guys have increased risk and you're doing a different kind of financing. So there is a fee for that. Right. So, and it's a cost of doing business. A lot of people get really hung up on, oh my gosh, the rates, but our rates start at 8% and one point. We do not charge a prepayment penalty. If they borrow money from us and they pay us off in 30 days, congratulations. We hope they come back and do it again. Um, A lot of private lenders will charge a minimum of three to six months of interest. We don't do that. They also only have to make interest-only payments because these are short-term loans. So that's the other thing. These aren't people that are holding these loans for a 30-year term and renting the house out. They would not be sophisticated investors if they were doing that. These people are doing value add. They're buying distressed properties, increasing the value. Some of them are fixing and flipping. Some of them are putting tenants in them. And more often than not, then they'll refinance out to more traditional financing that cash flows their property. But it gives them ability to get the property, rehab it, get a tenant in it, and then 
they're, you know, they have an increased value and they can go to more traditional sources. Okay. So I told y'all that I would do a review of Follow Up Boss, you know, because I'm your friend in real estate and I did. Now, you know, there's a blue million CRM out there. I mean, if you go to any Facebook group, every realtor is like, which one should I use? Which one should I use? And you know that these CRM, which are client relationship managers or customer relationship manager, whatever you want to call it, it's truly a system that's just designed to help you know what to do next because you're very busy and you're a multitasker in real estate with all those different tasks and balls up in the air. You need something to help you stay on track. And that's what Follow Up Boss does. Now, when you save a name and a phone number in there, that is basically a Rolodex. Follow Up Boss is going to take the names and phone numbers and also help you know what to do next so you can maintain these relationships with your neighbors because that's what this is about. Real estate is not about serving just prospects and clients. It's about taking great care of your neighbor's needs in real estate. And if you'll use a tool like Follow Up Boss where they remember you, oh, they might even call you when they're ready to buy or sell again or when their mom and daddy do or their best friend or their kid and you want to be top of mind, that's what a product like Follow Up Boss will do for you. Truly, it's going to change your business when you start paying better attention to people. They don't have to know you use Follow Up Boss, but they'll totally understand that they are being heard by you. So now there's a free trial for my people because you're loved. Go to followupboss.com slash crazy. No credit card is required. And frankly, because you're my people and we made an ask for you, Follow Up Boss said, yes, you get double the free trial. That's actually enough time to log in, put some pieces in it and watch it change your business as it has for so many realtors and teams nationwide. Again, go to followupboss.com slash crazy to start your free trial today. And that's flexibility. So somebody could think they're going to buy it, fix it up and sell it. But then they say, you know what? I fell in love with it and I love the neighborhood. I want to keep yeah. it. So you just think about that transition of that money. So thank you for that little bit of backdrop and understanding. And of course, those of y'all that are over there with your brains turning and have questions, <laughs> You can go to the show notes and reach out to her and ask her questions or look at her backdrop. So Heather, of course, the whole purpose of crazy shit in real estate is we like to talk about the things nobody sees because Chip and Joanna Gaines are the very <laughs> rare ones. They just really cute and had TV staff now. So they are different. So the public thinks it's perfect. The real estate agent out there doesn't always deal in what you deal in and most people just don't have any idea of what real estate looks like. So I'd love to know from your perspective and all the different pieces you've done in and around real estate, what's the story you would tell me if we were sitting down to have a glass of something and you said, you are never going to believe this? <laughs> well, we have so many of them. Uh, we actually, so a good story right now is we bought a property 18 months ago. And bought it from a distressed seller that had a tenant in it that was not paying. And uh, she proceeded to stay there for 18 months, like with city code violations, garbage all over the yard. We've taken it to the city multiple times over the last And not paying. So no, no rent coming in. No, nope. Can't get her out. And every time we would take her to the city and have a hearing on it, she would clean the yard up. So they would go the night before. And this happened four or five times. Actually, just this week, after her getting a legal aid and fighting being evicted, she was evicted. Yesterday, the sheriff showed up. We moved her stuff to the sidewalk. And she's like, that's okay. I understand. It's like for 18 months, you didn't understand. So there's so many stories. My husband and I bought a house that had a hole in the roof. And it was not a skylight. It was a hole that had been there for five years because it had been vacant and snowing. As you may not know, it snows here. So for five winters and rain, we rehab that. That was actually our first rehab full of organic growth. And uh, yeah, it took us a little bit of time, but it was a great learning experience because we're handy. And we thought, we'll do our day jobs and we're going to do this on the weekends. We'll get this done in a few months now. It took about nine to 10 months, um, but we learned a lot. You know, we learned that we won't be swinging hammers ever again. We will sub all that work out. Right, and so yeah. yeah, I mean, time is money, right? The quicker you're in and out of those deals, the more profits you make. So spending a little bit more money on the front end, rehabbing a house definitely pays off in the long run. So 
So um, let me ask you a question about that, because a lot of people in the neighborhoods where they live, they know where that house is, the one that's had a hole in the roof for five years, and it's just sitting there, mm-hmm. and it's sad and dilapidated. In 2022, with all the technology we have, it's harder and harder to track people down. How do you reach the owner of that property so that you can buy it and fix it up and help the neighborhood come back? Because those properties are not just eyesores, they're safety hazards in a neighborhood. How do you find the property owner? Well, sometimes they've been taken over by the county or the city. If they are a blighted house, they have what's called lien abatement. So it could be because I mean, our fund bought one that was a drug house and it was vacant for years. And we actually bought that from the city of Spokane, Washington. Um, So really finding out who's controlling the ownership of the house. Um, We as a company have some actual software programs where you can actually track down the, the owner and it will actually go to the extent of sending them a letter. A lot of times they're families that someone passed away They owe a bunch of taxes. Nobody can afford to keep the house up. So they sit there. We love to buy those houses. It takes some effort on your part tracking down the owner. That's the biggest challenge. Um, But when you do, more often than not, especially if it's in a family estate or something like that, they want to get rid of it. They can't afford to keep the taxes current. They're not insuring it. And then also going to your county for taxes, property taxes finding out if there's delinquent taxes, that's another great strategy to buy those types of houses. Well, a lot of people look at it as, oh, you're stealing a house. No, not necessarily, because obviously if you are a realtor, you're in the profession, what you want to do is let them know this is what it's worth in its current condition. This is what it's worth if you fix it up. If I'm going to buy it, here's the different scenarios. You'd lay out the whole menu of options, Mm -hmm. but a house that's not being cared for is a problem house for somebody somewhere. And so often the person who does buy it to fix it up is bringing a solution to the community. So I just want to throw that out there because there is a misconception that investors are stealing houses. They're not if they're doing it correctly. And I know there's some that don't give the full picture, but obviously we advocate for people doing it the right way and saying, here's everything that could be. So let's see, before I let you off the show, what are y'all buying now? Do you buy in Idaho or are you buying elsewhere? What do you, when you put on your investor hat, since you and your husband are active now, what do you look for? So we're buying in Washington and Idaho right now. There is a big opportunity right now to buy distressed landlord properties with a lot of the events challenges and tenants not paying. Um, There are a lot of mom and pop landlords out there that are looking to get rid of properties that have non-paying tenants. And one of the strategies, and I think you're right, a lot of people have a bad taste in their mouth for investors buying these properties, like they're stealing these houses from these people. But what we've been able to do with these properties that have non-paying tenants is we've gotten them rental assistance. And Now they're paying again and they can stay in the house. You know, some of these mom and pop landlords just don't understand that there's those programs out there. And we have a massive team behind us that can help call. And, you know, it's not our intention to displace people, but to keep them with a roof over their head and in affordable housing. And that's what we focus on is the affordable housing market. So even if we're buying a house and selling it, it's to first time home buyers more often than not. And we'll carry an owner contract. So we're creating home ownership for people that probably wouldn't qualify for that if they tried to go through traditional routes. So that's probably one of the most recent strategies. We're also looking at multifamily. Our market is hot. The median house price in Coeur d'Alene is four hundred and fifty thousand. I believe two years ago it was two fifty. That's and a so, big jump. I know. So you have all these locals that have decided that they're going to sell because mm-hmm. they're going to make more money on their house than they ever would have. Right. But now they're displaced because they can't afford housing. And so there is a big opportunity right now for multifamily, specifically in this market. And I love how you're pointing out a couple of things here. And the first one is the COVID era that has had a lot of non-paying tenants has resulted in investor fatigue. And even people who could financially weather the storm, it's exhausting to chase people around for money or to feel like a bad guy. So investor fatigue is real and it's not a bad thing. It's just an opening for other people that want to make this a part of their investment strategy. 
And I love what you're talking about with owner occupants and affordable housing, because one thing we forget about in the affordable space or the attainable space is that a house that is a blight in a neighborhood, if an investor can fix it up, it's still going to generally be less than other properties in mm-hmm. town. But most of our first timers don't have the knowledge or the money or the wherewithal to make something livable. So investors are also creating an opportunity for somebody else to have a turnkey move in. And that's something really important that, again, we have to fix some of these myths about investors in the marketplace, because while there's bad eggs in every group, Mm -hmm. what our investors are doing is providing a lot of good opportunities. And so I I love the couple of angles that you're working in there. So Heather, if somebody wants to reach out to you and find out more about what you guys have to offer either for owner carry or private money so they can do a fix and flip or multifamily, all those different spaces that you've been learning for 20 years and now are able to help people with, how can they best find you? Is it the information on your Zoom screen? Absolutely. So they can always visit our website at Secured Investment Corp. We also have passive opportunities for investing. So that's another thing that I actually really focus mostly on is we have a lot of clients that have made wealth through real estate and are fatigued and ready to do something more passive, but they still like that asset. We actually have real estate funds that they can actually invest in. They're yielding double digit returns. So regardless of whether you're an active real estate investor looking for funding or you're at that point in your life where you're ready to just deploy some capital passively, even specifically through self-directed IRAs and things of that nature, reach out to us. We can talk to you more about that. And always at our website, Secured Investment Corp., my direct contact on the screen there. So I would love to talk with people more and see how we can help them. Perfect. And all of Heather's contact information is in the show notes for this episode. So you can go click there and reach out to her and call or email anytime. And as she mentions, if you're a little bit sick of the stock market because it is going through some really interesting rocky Mm -hmm. moments right now. Real estate can be part of those safe havens that will take your heartburn and ease it up a little bit because people always have to have somewhere to live. So Heather, thank you for coming on the show and giving us lots of different angles to think about and investigate. That's my favorite kind of episode and appreciate you sharing that much knowledge with us. It was an honor. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, friends, if you learned something from Heather or if there's something you need to learn more about, you need to hit it in the comments, give her a like and a thumbs up, give me five stars, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Okay. Now, don't forget to go try Follow Up Boss so that your business can continue to expand in professionalism and then you can meet some more crazy people yourself. I really appreciate Follow Up Boss sponsoring this episode, but mainly I appreciate them for giving y'all double the free trial time with no credit card required. So make sure you go to followupboss.com slash crazy and then let me know what you think. I'll see you guys next time. As always, I'm so super thrilled that you joined in for more crazy shit. And if you're a realtor, investor, inspector, lender, or just a regular human being who happens to have an unbelievable story that you need to tell the world about, or frankly, you just need to one up the story you just heard, then make sure to DM me on Instagram at Lee Thomas Brown or tweet me at Lee Brown or frankly, any social network where you hang out. I'm there. And if you had some fun, then you totally won't just subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes. 